Hello, in this video I want to show you how to create a binary release of an existing ROS2 package. So binary releases are packages that you can install on your local computer by executing um, sudo apt install uh, using the command line or sudo apt dash get install and they will download and um, you can start using them right away uh, without having to compile your workspace so they are very easy to use and um, they are perfect if you want to distribute or make a publicly available your package to other users so this is the first part of a video where I will show how to create such a binary release My name is Roberto from The Construct. Um, I will show you how to create a binary release of a package using the platform from The Construct. Um, go to theconstructsim.com um, and enter with your to your account or create an account if you don't have one. And um, it's free. So here you can create a ROS check. A ROS check is a project that contains um, ROS files, just as um, a local environment in the cloud. I just um, started this ROS check, so it will load my files, and I will short share these files uh, with you. Um, have a look at the video description for a link to this ROS check. Now that it has loaded, let me um, just open a web shell and a code editor window. So why, why would we like to have a binary release? Well, binary release are ways to install packages that are easier to use than uh, cloning our repository from github and having to build the workspace so you just install them when a package is um, has a binary release you install them using a package manager such as apt or apt-get so um, I am following the documentation, the official ROS2 documentation, which I have linked here. They have a guide on how to release a, a package. And I'm also assuming that um, you have an existing ROS2 package, so you already did that part of programming um, our package or a node that has some kind of functionality and now you may want to make it publicly available um, so and, and distribute it um, use over using these package managers and I'm also assuming that you have um, that you know um, git some git that you can do some commits and push pull to a remote such a github uh, I will be using github here and um, that you that you also have a github account so let's um continue here so the first step is to create a release repository so let me show you the repository that i want to create a release of um it's this one, the wall follower, ROS2 package. Um, it's just a wall follower node. So it, it takes uh, data from the laser scan readings and based on where the obstacles are in front or at the left, or the right side of the robot, it will publish a command velocity um, messages to the command velocity topic and um, will move the robot to, to follow the wall. This is a very basic version. So the first thing to do is to create a new repository 
that you um, can call however you want, but it's a convention to call it a same name as your um, repository that you want to that you want to um, release and um, append uh, uh, dash release at the end. So my package is wall underscore follower underscore ROS2. You, all, you just see, um, I just showed it. And this uh, new um, repository is, uh, has a dash release at the end of it. So whatever description, You want to give it release repository wall fo follower okay so the rest um you can leave it as is a public repository we don't want to either read me and or a dot git ignore file let's just create this repository all right so the first step check we created a release repository why do we need a release repository um because during the release process um, this process will create some output some files and they need to be stored somewhere so um it has to be a separate repository from this source code. So that's why you basically create a repository with the same name of the source code repository and append a dash release to it. That's all we have to do at this moment. So the next step is to create a release team. What is a release team? A release team are the users, um, a group of users, normally belonging to an organization that have um, the ability to to manage the releases so they have the rights to to perform releases so sometimes uh, your organization already has a release team but um, so in, in such a case you would join uh, that release team or if not then you can create an organization or create a new release team. And that's what I will show you here. So following the official ROS2 documentation, one must complete the uh, new release team issue template. Let's do it now. So since um, I want to create a new team, I have to fill out here name of the new release team. Let's just call it the construct. And the repository that we want to add. So it's this one. I mean, this is the release repository. So we Yes, I will paste here a link to the release repository. What is the link to the release repository? It's only one, so I don't need this. And the original repository with the with the with the package with the source code. So, I guess I will do it like this. Kind of link link to the wall underscore follower underscore ROS2 repository and um, then there is an existing release repository which should be imported and a link to it like this. So team members just uh, let's in this case it's me 
So you use your um, GitHub name, GitHub user name, and um, that's it. I will submit this issue and let's see how it goes. Um, let's go back here. So next thing we need is to install the tools that we require for for the release. Um, we need to install Bloom and we need to install um, Python 3 dash catkin package and we do it from a um, really um, binary file using sudo apt install. So if you get this message that um, it failed to fetch or was unable to fetch, let's just um, try running um, sudo apt update. And now install the same command. All right, they, I could, it worked. So it took a time, but it worked. So great. What's next? All right, next step is to create a Git access token. So um, since um, this release process will be writing and reading from, from GitHub, and um, we don't want to enter the password manually each time. We can create a git access token and uh, I will show you how. Go to your GitHub account and um, under settings, um, scroll down and under developing setting on the left side, you will find uh, again on the left side, personal access token. So here you have to click on create new token. And um, I will just enter my password and confirm. it will ask um, for a name. So just give it Bloom and um, it's um, so that you can identify no expiration. And um, let me just check what are the rights. So I have to select public repo and uh, workflow workflow and repo. These two need to be checked. Uh, that's it. I think that's it. So here you um, will have a, fa a fa um, green uh, uh, green background over the green background you will have your token. So it's, it's not shown here, but um, you just copy it and um, keep it on a safe place because it's, it's, like a, it's like a password to your GitHub account. 
Great, let's continue. So now that we have our um, GitHub token here inside, um, you're inside your home directory, create a directory name dot config. And um, inside it, create a file that you will name Bloom. That's it. And I will be using the um, code editor to place the content that I will need inside that file. Let me see. Open user config. Boom. So it has to have a specific uh, format like this. GitHub user. So your GitHub user username and uh, the token will be the token that you that we just generated uh, on the GitHub page this long string alphanumeric string so you paste it here and um, you save your file great so that's it for this uh, first part of this video let me show you some of the new courses. Um, if you already started learning ROS and you did the basic courses, you can move on on some of the newer courses that we have here from instance um, ROS Intermediate here. Um, we'll teach you about um, threading in ROS2, the callbacks or quality of service, DDS, and uh, managed nodes, for instance. So have a look and um, keep pushing your ROS learning. See you in the next video. Bye. The ROS2 Intermediate course covers how to create launch files for ROS2 using different formats, like for instance Python, XML or YARN. You will also learn how to work with parameters in ROS2. The course also covers how to manage threading in ROS2 using executors or how to handle callbacks using the callback groups. You will also learn about a couple of very important concepts in ROS2 such as the quality of service and DDS. Finally, you will also learn how to work with managed nodes in ROS2. Start learning now!